So, hi everyone, uh, my name is Alex, I'm uh, with uh, SAP, and uh, today I would like to share with you the journey that uh, SAP has actually begun almost two years ago to bring the SAP Cloud Platform to China. Um, <clears throat> for today, we have actually a quite uh, interesting uh, session. We will uh, start with uh, um, a little bit of introduction uh, towards Alibaba and the most interesting services uh, for you. Uh, we will continue with uh, an uh, experience of uh, what we um, actually uh, had uh, towards enabling uh, the platform and all the services that SAP has um, in uh, China. So we will talk about the challenges, about the real, so to speak, what's uh, make uh, a little bit uh, sometimes China more uh, um, uh, challenging uh, um, to aim at and uh, we will cover all the uh, technical aspects, all the, um, even, uh, we will cover all the interesting areas from our, uh, uh, our experience. Um, my team is actually uh, responsible for um, working with different YAS vendors, so um, we worked uh, previously with Google and we worked with Azure and we actually um, enabled the porting and uh, the support of the SubCloud platform um, on the early stages uh, on those platforms and working with the different YAS vendors. Normally what we do, we ensure that they have the right features, uh, the right services enabled, and in a good shape to enable the SubCloud platform to run in an optimal way. Um, uh, we will also have a demo, um, a quick demo to show um, what actually um, it feels like uh, to use Cloud Foundry in China. So we will uh, um, also have uh, a little bit hands-on on that. And in the end, of course, there will be also some room for questions and answers. So anyone that has uh, something uh, that he would like to ask, there will be plenty of room to share, and I will try to answer. OK. <clears throat> some of you um, may know um, Alibaba. Um, some of you may not. Uh, for those of you uh, who not, um, Alibaba are actually quite huge in Asia. Um, they have a lot of services, a lot of offerings. Um, it goes uh, um, from uh, maybe um, commercial offerings um, as um, as uh, the Taobao, as the eBay, uh, sorry, as the Taobao um, that uh, is actually, an, uh, so to speak, relatively, um, we can compare that uh, to Amazon or to what eBay has to offer in China. They have uh, offerings as Alipay. This is actually a service that can enable uh, anyone in China to pay and perform transactions, um, um, also B2B, also um, uh, customers can use that. If you travel as a foreigner uh, to Asia, you will actually find out that most of the uh, people uh, are not using currency to pay for different um, things they buy. They are actually using uh, different payment systems. So Alipay is one of uh, uh, the options and actually is one of the most uh, interesting ones. Um, also transaction-wise and uh, volume-wise, uh, Alibaba actually has a lot of products and a lot of, uh, um, a lot of volume of transactions and uh, data that's uh, flowing in. And uh, maybe the best part about that uh, um, is that uh, for their, uh, their own services, they're also using their own cloud. And that's actually the Ali Cloud. Uh, what makes the cloud to be very mature, very full and rich of services and features. Um, essentially, it can be uh, as such compared with volume and, and also at uh, business uh, transactions that it serves to other uh, big YAS vendors that are out there today as Google, as uh, Azure. Uh, so, so to speak, we can expect from that cloud the same quantities and the same qualities. Um, so maybe let's uh, take one step back and I will share with you uh, when we uh, first began to work uh, on that project, we actually worked very closely with Alibaba. So my team and also uh, um, SAP was closely engaged uh, with the product teams and also with the service group in Alibaba. Uh, so starting bottom up, so essentially when we started to work uh, on the project, there was actually no option uh, for SAP to get a corporate account. Uh, to use in uh, Alibaba, but uh, 
that was actually something we worked on with their product and today there is a corporate concept, uh, all features, all uh, things that are needed to actually enable corporates run, have an, uh, so to speak, uh, overall master account that can manage sub accounts with at least the SAP features that we need um, is in place. So Alibaba was very responsive. All the features that we uh, actually asked were implemented. Um, going uh, one step up to the YAS features. Uh, so on the YAS features uh, area, so I can say that from experience, most of the features that existed there were sufficient. Uh, so even, even when we started around two years ago, most of the services did perform actually what we wanted to um, to have. However, we did uh, still um, ask for a few adjustments in the area of the uh, security of the different uh, uh, services. Also, we have uh, actually um, engaged in discussions regarding several features uh, because the subcloud platform works also on Azure YAS vendors. For us, it sometimes actually is interesting uh, to have a parity across some features to have our implementation on the high level, so to speak, the same. and. Uh, implement, so to speak, the same common way uh, to work on different YAS vendors. An example to that, for instance, is that AliCloud had a feature that enabled uh, only five security groups that could be assigned on EVM. For SAP, we had YAS vendors where actually supported the uh, uh, 16, AWS support 16, and we had a requirement to increase that size of uh, security groups that can be attached that essentially allowed us to actually have the same implementation, have the same security groups as we have in AWS, also work in AW, in AliCloud with regards to the quantities. But that's just a small example of, uh, of a feature change. Of course, there were more changes like that that we worked together with them to actually adjust. But uh, minority of features, and uh, as I said, most of it is there. And of course, maybe the most interesting part for all of you is the Cloud Foundry section, so, uh, or, or actually the, the, the topmost uh, um, implementation of uh, what Alibaba uh, has achieved, and it's actually um, uh, very awesome. So uh, in two years' time, um, even before, even as they started, after around half a year or so, they already came up with a Bosch CPI implementation. We will double click that in a second. Uh, that essentially enabled to deploy Cloud Foundry in Alibaba. Uh, Alibaba um, is also um, a big company. It has uh, different regions. So you can actually deploy in China or outside of China. So that's uh, a preference. When we tried out at first, we started with Frankfurt. But uh, later on, of course, in China. I will, in a brief, um, say why we started in Frankfurt and actually what you can do and what are the different deployment options. Um, so the CPI is here and ready. Actually today it's very mature. Uh, stem cell were adjusted, so uh, they supported the Ubuntu Trusty um, as a private release and Xenial is already available at the Bosch AO website, so it's uh, consumable, you can use that. Uh, there is a CI process in place, so they are currently working with the community to actually um, uh, rolled it out fully to be integrated and uh, uh, respectively the same as other YAS vendors uh, do with regards to verification and automation of everything. So the quality of uh, the changes and the releases of the CPI is going to be, so to speak, preserved and they are making efforts to make that happen. And uh, of course other services as the bit service and the other community services uh, were also adjusted to support uh, uh, what SAP and also what the community normally will want to have from a Cloud Foundry offering running on top of a YAS vendor. Um, last but not least, uh, also a Terraform version is available. It also started back then when SAP firstly engaged with AliCloud for bringing the Cloud Foundry and what we have with regards to the platform to China. And Terraform actually today supports most of the Alibaba features. So all of the new features and all of the existing features that they have, they actually also implement support in Terraform, which allows you essentially to um, reuse your Terraform skills, reuse your projects that already supports Terraform to also deploy an AliCloud. For us, it also was actually essential and allowed us to uh, reuse the same concepts and the same, and the same, so to speak, way that we deploy the platform on other YAS vendors as well. Okay, Bosch CPI, we're not going to, uh, to go over all the changes, but essentially already in 2017, there was a first re release of the CPI already, and beyond that date, actually there were some improvements, some feature requests from us, some feature requests from the community. It's ongoing, we expect to have uh, more changes here. 
Um, however, it's already up there. You can use it, you can try that out and deploy Cloud Foundry with Alibaba, it will work. Okay, Alibaba Cloud Services. <clears throat> so here I actually wanted uh, to go back to the first, uh, so to speak, step of what does it mean to work um, on Alibaba, what accounts, what services are there that exist for you. So essentially, um, if uh, you would like to work on Alibaba, you have two options. Or you go for an international account, or you go for a domestic account. So those uh, two account types are actually um, um, are important uh, with regards to the business that you would like to do. So if you're in an international company, but you would like uh, um, maybe to offer your website in China or maybe just uh, use AliCloud for hosting, so that's the kind of account that you should get. And if you are a domestic company that's residing in China and you would like to sell to the outside of China or in China itself, different hosting services, as actually SAP wants to do, so you should go for the domestic version. Feature-wise, they are quite the same, so you have all the features available in international and domestic. The international one is a little bit more translated, and there is also a, a policy in AliCloud that they first release to the domestic accounts. So there are more experimental features that have to prove themselves before they are transitioned to the international version. Uh, from experience, we worked with both. We started uh, in an uh, international account, then we switched to domestic. Cloud Foundry worked on both of them. So essentially, um, you can uh, decide what your business needs and based on that, actually make this decision. <coughs> Some um, other interesting uh, uh, <clears throat> and maybe um, China-specific uh, uh, constraints that you may actually want to highlight for yourself is um, several things. So first, uh, there is a process of real user verification that's required if and only you would like to have actually um, services and uh, things consumed in China. So uh, soon I will also demonstrate the AliCloud portal and uh, show you actually uh, what does it mean, how the regions looks like, but essentially, if you actually go and create resources in regions other than China, then everything uh, will work. No user verific verification is required. But if you would like to provision resources in China, then you actually have to f uh, fulfill a process of real user verification. If you are a corporate, so there is a different process for that. You need to actually approve your company. And, and that also works. So that's up uh, actually um, also to, to, to your specific needs to understand what verification you will have to do. AliCloud offered now both. When we started, it was actually, um, they didn't have the corporate account concept. Definitely you can see how for SAP it's a challenge like to pass r real user verification for our employees. So when we started, we actually started with a POC account that was uh, granted for us, so it was easy for us uh, to skip that. But essentially, if you are going to provide businesses, uh, business ser services in China, so you have to decide where to go. <coughs> um, so one, uh, one word more, maybe about what's special in China. Um, if you are going to have domains in China, um, so you have to pass ISP certification to actually certify uh, uh, those domains uh, to work in China, it's very, very uh, important process. As a corporate, you shouldn't underestimate that process. Um, it is, uh, so to speak, it's not an easy process. You have to have someone in China that actually will uh, submit this application. Um, of course, if you're a company, you can achieve that. There are, um, AliCloud actually even offer some services that can enable you to, to go and uh, um, apply with their website and they offer the service, but essentially to have a domain in China and uh, if the domain is going to be used to sell or provide services there, it should be ISP certified. Um, it means several things. It's not just the domain. It's also the hosting VM that's going to host the VM. Uh, sorry, to host the website, uh, it's the load balancer that is, that is going to serve this uh, VM, so it's many products that are tied up to this verification. Um, luckily, uh, um, so once you have the ISP certification done, you are okay, all the products will work um, um, as they should, but it's something that you have to be aware of, and it should be planned, like it normally a process that can take some time. From service perspective, we are not going to um, just, uh, you know, um, service by service and see what's there, but essentially um, what I want you to take is that uh, for every service that uh, is available in AWS, there is an, a, a, so to speak, matching service offering in AliCloud, um, far beyond the computing storage network database. Uh, they have most of the offerings, most of the 
um, options, uh, so to speak, to um, select the database you need uh, to have the different uh, networking and VPC um, uh, products uh, to use. Um, one thing to say uh, on top, so they also offer products that are, of course, um, specific to China, things that you will like to probably use if you would like to have your business there. As uh, CDNs, um, they offer acceleration products. They offer uh, different, uh, um, so to speak, ISP as certification services. So all of these uh, things that you may need to start in China will be present for you. And of course, all the common services are also there or on the roadmap. So they have huge teams. They are working on everything. So that's uh, security, management, domain, websites, email. Um, so all of them are there. If you have any interest on uh, some details for some of the services, we can also you can also ask that on the questions. <clears throat> okay. So now let's go to cloud platform. Let's talk about a little bit about. Uh, uh, when we started, what actually uh, was the goal for the cloud platform in China? And uh, also, uh, in a bit, we will talk about the challenges that we had. So, um, everything started around two years ago. Uh, the main uh, um, goal for SAP is actually to make the sub platform offering available in China. It should come with all the SAP services, um, including uh, uh, big data, including uh, machine learning, including uh, um, uh, web editors, including uh, connectivity to SAP, including uh, all in all what we have to offer in other YAS regions um, as uh, we do today um, uh, outside of China. So we want to package everything, make everything available in China, and it's going to be um, also accessible for um, uh, corporates in China, and uh, um, it uh, is, um, so to speak, an offering that uh, will be offered not by SAP itself, but an offering that will be offered by a SAP partner company, because you have to be actually uh, um, a Chinese company to offer a service like that in China. But that's, uh, so to speak, business uh, aspects. I'm less in the details, so don't uh, quote me for that. Uh, but anyhow, the offering is intended to actually um, be available in a full extent. So uh, what you can do in the platform outside of China is going to be shipped and available also in China. Um, from the platform, uh, just uh, I wanted to highlight like the main areas we have, uh, so that later on, once we talked about, we'll talk about the challenges. So you can uh, um, actually uh, point out and see like really, yeah, uh, uh, there was work here to do. So it's not uh, something small. So on top of uh, the regular areas that you can actually see in Cloud Foundry itself, so it's the left section here. This is uh, the Cloud Foundry area, so the Diego cells, um, Cloud Controller, UAA, so all the services that Cloud Foundry has. On top of that, we also have a layer in SAP that knows to actually monitor everything, knows to audit, knows to provide uh, different uh, um, visibility to operations, uh, knows to actually tell what is what, uh, what's going on, what's not going uh, on so well. On the platform, we also have all the marketplace services that comes from SAP, so all the service teams that work in SAP, normally they also will deliver something that will be available uh, for easy consumption for developers of the platform. And that's, uh, so to speak, is a, a service that is going to be offered across the different locations that we work on, and of course in China as well. So when we will talk about the challenges, we actually, my team also had uh, to understand that each service, all requirements are met so, so that um, everything, security, connectivity, everything can actually go, go well. Another aspect to this platform, to the subcloud platform, is actually the deployment. Deployment-wise, it's a super challenging platform to deploy, operate, and monitor. So um, <clears throat> um, you can see that uh, we're using uh, heavily concourse to deploy things and uh, initiate updates. We also have um, Bosch in place that uses C the CPI to work with different YAS vendors. For, so for AliCloud, of course, we are using the AliCloud CPI today. And also, they have changes made in Bosch to enable us to um, um, deploy everything. Um, honestly, so it's, it's working great. So all the changes code-wise um, are working as expected. Um, what we can actually add on uh, and look as something special uh, um, in this implementation, in, in what we in the team had to actually deal is also the connectivity aspects and the China-specific challenges. And <clears throat> actually, this may be one of the most uh, interesting slides. 
So in this slide, um, I will share with you some of the challenges. So before we begin to dive into each one of those points and uh, say maybe a few words about them, so many of you probably uh, heard that the Ch uh, the China has actually a firewall that, uh, uh, so to speak, governs uh, what enters, uh, governs what goes out. So uh, from our experience, uh, the firewall works like that. So if you are going to be using um, something in China that is hosted outside of China, you will have issues. The firewall is actually unpredictable. Um, it means that um, you may have connections that will go uh, who super fast. You will, you you get good connectivity, but uh, if you try uh, and download that again, you will uh, be down uh, down to kilobytes uh, bytes, and even the connection can be shut down. So essentially, um, if you try to download outside of China, you have some trouble. You cannot actually um, do a lot of things. We will uh, touch the, the things that are challenging. And uh, actually, if you are trying to access China again from outside of China, you are hitting the same problem. So the firewall works both ways. So if you download from China or if you download from outside of China, you will have challenges uh, doing so. Um, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about time and DNS. So when we try to actually implement things in China, we uh, soon found out that we could not use the Google DNS time, and we could uh, we could not use the Google DNS and the Google NTP time servers, uh, simply because uh, they are blocked in China. Um, essentially, you could try to use other time servers or other, uh, so to speak, name servers, but those uh, essentially would be uh, flaky and won't actually work all the time. And that's something that you have to guarantee to be actually precise. If you have time issues, things will go really wrong. Like certificates won't work, uh, um, CPI commands will fail, so really wrong things will happen. Um, to solve that, luckily, um, AliCloud offers local NTP time servers, so you can configure those and they will be locally available in your network to use. So that's a uh, problem solved for that. DNS also, they have local DNS. Every VM, of course, can connect to that, consume the, um, the names, everything will be good, but uh, DNS is not perfect. DNS actually can lie, so it can, if you try to query for websites that are actually not permitted in China, so uh, we saw that for Facebook, normally content websites. So if you do technical stuff, probably this is okay, but if you go for content websites, DNS may actually return you something false. Um, we didn't try to solve that problem. It's a problem that essentially couldn't be solved easily. It's uh, something that you cannot trick, so the DNS uh, you have to leave is that, so to speak, uh, and we um, actually when we face that as SAP, we face that in the deployment perspective. So for us, we actually made sure that thousands of services that we deploy didn't suffer from the DNS issue. So uh, of course, um, the impact is that something won't work. Simply, we won't trust the certificate and the connection won't succeed. So there is like no impact to download something falsely, but there is an impact that something will fail if the DNS will be flaky. So for that, uh, that's for the DNS. Networking. So networking, as I said, if you are in China, you are good. If you are out of China um, and trying, uh, so to speak, uh, um, uh, to provide a resource to China, you have a challenge. Uh, to solve that, if you are a corporate, you can buy from AliCloud Express Connect. It will, um, so to speak, cost a lot of money, but it will solve the connectivity problem by 100%. We actually tested that. It's a good connection that can be trusted. Um, ISP filling, we a little bit uh, talked about that. Uh, what you can also maybe take and outline for you, what does it mean for a shared domain concept with Cloud Foundry? If you have to do ISP filling for uh, the domain, the root domain, uh, can you trust the, so to speak, application hosted on your shared domain? Maybe you cannot, so that's uh, a topic for itself. Um, and for SAP, actually, if we go one slide forward, the way to actually uh, solve the connectivity between China and uh, so to speak, make everything available in China. Um, so we um, actually took the direction of self-contained deployment. And what we try to do, we actually try to um, package um, all our resources and make those available in China. So what does it mean to package our resources? So for, um, <clears throat> so the most may maybe easy thing to package is the Bosch releases, so they can be pre-compiled and then they can actually be um, somehow transferred to China. Um, Docker images, they can be also stored in the repository that will be available in China. Uh, stem cell images, um, they can also be stored as part of the same repository. So essentially all the artifacts that are needed for the SAP deployment, we have a process to package them up 
and make them available in China. Uh, one of the most complex processes that is not yet fully developed, so it's currently work in progress, is actually the build pack area. So if you push an application, um, you actually have to um, download things. The build pack are normally coming uh, online. They will try to download stuff. And uh, one option to solve that is also to actually uh, pre-compile the build packs and uh, have the application binaries already, uh, so to speak, uh, uh, there. So if it's a Node.js application, you will have the node models there. If it's a Golang application, you will submit the vendor and, and use that. And uh, SAP will actually provide you the build pack probably offline that you can use. And then everything uh, from a push perspective should work. Essentially for us, we will have to provide enough versioning, enough flexibility for the customer to lock on the different, uh, so to speak, build pack versions. So it's a challenge. Definitely uh, it's not easy to transfer uh, thousands of, uh, uh, so to speak, dependencies to China and also make those updated, but that's something that SAP established to actually overcome that issue. And how you can actually transfer between two regions, you can use the Express Connect product to actually reliably tra transfer TARS, or you can fly uh, <laughs> with a hard drive. So that, that also will work, maybe even be cheaper because it's a very expensive line, really, <laughs> really expensive. Okay, <clears throat> so I think uh, we have maybe two minutes for a quick demo. Share my screen. Okay. So um, actually what I wanted to show you is uh, that I'm going to use a CF endpoint that is currently hosted in China. Um, <clears throat> just a second. Also, I need to adjust my screen because I'm not seeing so well from here. So let's do a mirror. Awesome. Now that can work. <laughs> okay, um, so what I wanted to show you that actually I'm going to connect to an endpoint in China um, to prove that we can actually um, ping uh, the IP of uh, <coughs> the Cloud Foundry um, application uh, that we will try to deploy soon. So it, currently the application doesn't yet is not yet deployed, so we are getting a, four, a 04 route for that. But essentially that's uh, the IP of the load balancer and the entry in China. We can actually confirm the IP location here and we will uh, resolve to a location in China. And now what I want to do is I want to actually CF push an application um, to um, our Cloud Foundry version running on Ali Cloud. Um, other uh, interesting uh, detail I can share with you is that we, in this deployment, have 101, uh, 101 instances running, serving Cloud Foundry in China. Um, you can actually see the AliCloud uh, uh, portal. Um, if you were interested of uh, actually how you can switch between regions, so you can see that uh, right now I'm, I have selected Shanghai, but I can easily actually also go to other regions, those are the available location. The portal is actually a domestic version, but it's fully translated to English, so they have English translation in place as well. And um, <coughs> what I want to show you is actually how a push works. So let's see if I have a connection. Okay, so this actually is a VM that is located in China. I am connected to that in an accelerated way, so you can see that my terminal works pretty fast. And um, what we can do, we, we have actually a demo app that I prepared, and we can try to push that. The demo app actually has two manifests. One manifest include a build pack that's called uh, test uh, node. This build pack is actually a cached build pack, and it will work. So if I will use this build pack in China and push my application, then we can expect the application to complete and work successfully. And that's uh, probably will be also uh, what we will offer to customers. The offline build packs and all the process like, that you can select what you would like to have. So right now the application is staged.
and soon enough it will be ready to go. Okay, it's online. If you refresh the page, we will, yeah, we got it. And just another manifest that's not using and flying build pack, just to feel, so to speak, the pain. So CF push manifest EU. So essentially this one is using a different build pack, a, a, the default one actually, the default Node.js build pack in China. So the default Node build pack, I expect, maybe we'll be lucky, maybe it will work now, but I expect it actually to fail on uh, some random download phase. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so m maybe it will succeed now. Um, th uh, the thing is that it will be sporadic. So you may have actually sporadic experience. For Golang, it won't work. <laughs> yeah, because uh, Golang is actually uh, based on Google and uh, a lot of repositories there are actually um, even uh, trickier to trick, so to speak, but uh, offline build pack solve that uh, issue completely. So I'm open for questions. If you have any questions or anything that you would like to ask, uh, Please fr feel free to do so. Feeling, it's filing. yeah, filing. That's for, That's for certifying a domain in China. So you have to actually uh, uh, pass a process that will uh, um, actually make your domain certified uh, to be used in China. You, you real user verification. So you also have to... In the, the corporate account, you can do that for a company. Right. Is that, is that just verifying your real company kind of thing? Yeah, so you are uh, actually, um, yeah, so you are getting a permit to actually delegate uh, um, also uh, this verification to your uh, employees, and uh, you essentially will verify uh, you as a company entity to work with, uh, so to speak, with Alibaba, uh, with regards to hosting in China. Let me check. DTS. Yeah, okay, so essentially uh, all VMs in AliCloud come with DTS. It's local time uh, zone in China. So uh, yeah, you can change that easily. You can actually configure the VMs to use UTC. Actually, the Bosch VMs, uh, they are going to use UTC by default. Um, but you have to be aware of that. Yeah, so uh, Gardner um, will also work, of course, uh, in China. Kubernetes already uh, is supported, so there are also efforts that were done to also enable the Kubernetes story to work on AliCloud as well. Great. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks, everyone, for joining and coming to the session. <laughs>